Well, hello, and welcome to our first lecture on the CryEngine Programming Lecture Series here at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson. I'm a visiting professor here at the university. This lecture series is going to be on um, the program that hopefully all of you have installed on your computer. Uh, this is going to be on the CryEngine Flow Graph Programming. <coughs> Excuse me, and this is called Tutorial 01 Introduction. Um, and let's talk about, um, let's wait, let me back up here uh, this way. Okay, let's talk about the flow graph. Uh, this is what the flow graph looks like when you call it up in your Cry Engine, your Cry Sandbox. The flow graph is a visual scripting system that's embedded in the Cry Engine Sandbox Editor, and all of you should have that. I'll show you how you get it up. The main advantage of the flow graph editor is that it you uh, that users like you folks don't need to have any scripting or programming knowledge. So there's really no academic skill per se required to use this very powerful flow graph that comes with the cry engine. Um, so let's go to the next slide here. Next one is um, Simple and complex logic can be built with only a few clicks and without requiring any scripting or coding, okay, which is cool because it can get a beginner right into doing some really cool stuff with the CryEngine. There is a huge library of nodes and you might add that, that provides the user with everything to fully control the entities and artificial intelligence in a level. So you might say, what's nodes? Well, that's the thing that they contain code and I'll I'll show you what those look like uh, let's go on to the next one here we've got in addition to being the main tool used for creating mission logic in single-player levels the flow graph can also be used to prototype gameplay effects and sound design the neat thing about this is that a level can have multiple graphs performing different tasks all at the same time sort of like a parallel processing thing so the, the flow graph uh, stuff that comes with the CryEngine is it, a very powerful tool to learn and learn how to use it right. Uh, what is the flow graph? Well, um, it's the main window where all editing takes place. So that's the flow graph. That's what we'll be looking at. And um, so it's this is the main editing pane, what's right in here, this, this whole thing. Th uh, this is where all the editing takes place. Nodes can be added, deleted, moved, and linked here. This window needs a lot of screen space to work with effectively, folks. So the best way to do this, all of you have access to dual, mo dual monitors here in this classroom. The best way to work with this is to open up the flow graph and then put that on a separate screen and keep it open. And that, and that your, other edit, uh, your other area that you're working on, you can see the effect that the flow graph has on it. Um, so that's an important thing to remember. We'll try doing that in, in this class. Uh, starting back on basics, here's how you open the flow graph. You go into the et main editor and you'll see an FG for flow, flow graph. And if you put the mouse over it, it'll say open flow graph. All you have to do is just click on the FG symbol. Okay. And then when you do that, uh, you, you will get the flow graph, but nothing will happen what you have to do first is you have to come up here to new uh, to activate uh, the, the main window pane. So be sure to go to file new to activate the main editing pane. You have to uh, do that as a step. Some people aren't aware of that and nothing seems to work. Um, right, so this is the main editing pane right here. And right clicking on the main editing pane brings this huge drop-down menu, which has all kinds of selections. And we'll be covering what these selections are in, uh, in future lectures. For right now, it's enough to know this is one of the ways of getting started. Just uh, once you put in new, go to the main pane there and right-click on it, and you'll have all these options. So uh, let's go to the next slide here. And what I'm going to do from that drop-down menu, I'm going to add a start node, just so we can see what a node looks like. Now, the start node is for when the game starts. And it's probably one of the most common nodes that you'll use. So it's, that, it, it's available in, in the main um, 
uh, drop down uh, menu there. And there's what the start uh, the game start node looks like. This is a node. It has a name. It's called game start, which is right there. It has input ports, which are these two little blue arrows here, and it has output ports. This particular one has only one output port. The way you you get this enlarged is that you can use your your uh, mouse uh, wheel uh, to make it larger or smaller, scroll in and out, and you can move around the screen uh, holding down your left mouse button, do other things holding down your right mouse button, but you can experiment with that yourself and get some ideas of what it does. The next window here, what we have is we have our component nodes. This is what's on the left. It's, it's in the component windows. Uh, all usable flow graph nodes can be found. Component nodes are nodes which do not represent an entity in the level, but have an abstract functionality that may uh, use one or more entities. What that means is that all the stuff here that's available on the flow graph, none of it represents an entity, like a bad guy or a good guy or a tree or a rock or a magic lamp. Uh, those are different nodes, but they're still done in the flow graph. What this on the left is, the component nodes, these represent non-entities. They're, they're sort of abstract ideas, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to select one of these entities. I'm going to select the logic uh, component, and when I do that, it opens up all of the different nodes that are available under logic. I see I can get an and node, an all, an any, a blocker, a condition, a condition inverse, a count blocker, a demultiplexer, a gate, an index, and so on. And in future lectures, we'll be going over what these do. As an example, the logic component contains all of the abstract logic nodes. So the not and the or and the once and the on change, they don't represent any kind of an asset that's in the game. What they do is they do some work on, on the asset. Okay, so that's what these uh, different components do, and I can open them up from there. What I did is I selected the N uh, node, and what I, I clicked on it, and I dragged it over to the right, so there it is. There's the node. Now, what if you want to know what the node does, all you have to do is put your mouse over the name of it, and this window will pop up explaining what the purpose of that node is. So you select the node you want, you drag it from the category window here uh, to the main editing pane over here, and then you can see what the description is, what it does. Okay, all right, let's go on to the next one here. And we now, we now come to the flow graph nodes. That's also on the left side of the, um, of the flow graph. The flow graph nodes essentially give you examples of, of different kinds of flow graphs. This one here is, is using dialogues, and up pops all these different nodes, and notice the connection arrows from the output ports to the input ports of the other ones. And some of these right here that you might look at are quite complex, but you can copy them, modify them, take them apart, put them back together again, and learn from uh, uh, what these nodes will do. This will help you get better in doing flow graph techniques, and we'll have some examples in, in some of the other lectures. Okay, the next slide here, we have the inputs window. The inputs window is over on the right of the flow graph, and what that does is that that makes it so that when I have an, a, no, a node, if I click on it to activate it, you'll see it gets activated, it has this blue bar around it, these inputs now correspond to uh, what, the, what these are over here inside the node, uh, these ports. Like, for example, I see a message port here. If I look over here on the right, I also see message. So if I type something in here, like hello world, that is now what will be in the message port. I can also make it so that I can change the font size because this is going to display a message. If I connect something to here to make it show, uh, it'll make the font size. So right now the font size is a 2, but I look over here, it says 2. So if I clicked on this, I can make it any font size I wish. Same way with the color, whether or not it's centered, and the X and Y coordinates and so on. So the inputs window is specific to the node currently selected. All node parameters can be edited here. 
okay? In addition to the input controls, there is an information tab that provides a description of the currently selected node. All right, so if I go to the next slide here, I have the search window because I'm going to have some pretty complex flow graphs. Entity graphs and action graphs can be searched for specific nodes and or values. Uh, entity graphs are, are flow graphs that have to do with an entity, like, like a bad guy uh, node or a good guy node or a magic lamp node. The action ones are the ones that are the abstract ones. Uh, the search options can be configured to include or exclude different parts of the nodes. The search can also be limited to action graphs or entities. The search results will be displayed in the search results part, which is down here. And a double click will jump to the corresponding graph. This becomes very powerful when you have a lot of uh, flow graphs uh, in one particular level. That's controlling many things in the level. Okay, let's go on to the next one. <coughs> uh, this one right here is sort of a summary of the stuff that we've covered. Uh, here is my, my whole shebang and shaboodle of my flow graph. Uh, this is the main window that I work with that I put these nodes in. Here's all my components over here that I can drag. These are my abstract components. These are my flow graph examples over here. These are my inputs that, uh, uh, that have parameters that correspond to the activated node. Uh, this is where I could do searching. Now you might say, wow, that's a lot of information. Well, this is the stuff that we need to get started with. So that's it for this part of the lecture. Uh, I'll be taking questions at the end of the lecture and reviewing anything we need to do here. Okay, thank you for your attention.